Hi all, welcome back to the statistical knowledge uh, required to understand the data in data mining. So this uh, uh, class which will uh, you know mainly focus on what are the basic statistical knowledge that is required to understand the data and the data set okay when it comes to um, uh, data mining. So that, that's what we are going to see in this particular class. So uh, the major uh, the major agenda for this is like you know what are the data objects the attribute types and, and the statistical descriptions of the data so what is basically data okay so data as uh, we have all discussed earlier and it could be any raw facts or figures or samples or instances it could be anything say if we, if we think about customers it could be the customer id its related data or student it could be student related data and attributes are nothing but the characteristics or the features so when it comes in terms of uh, uh, into data mining we will call it as dimensions features or variables so attributes is nothing but the property or a, or a characteristic of uh, of a particular object and uh, here in uh, in data mining we will call uh, you know uh, the records as we see in a in a database here we will call it as uh, instances or observations so uh, so considering this titanic uh, data set let me take my uh, laser pointer so yeah so when we consider this uh, titanic data if you could see that these are nothing but the attributes the survived uh, each column so each column values can be called as an attributes or can could be considered as an attributes for this particular data and uh, uh, if you could see uh, each of this records which are there would be called as observations these are nothing but the instances or the observations now uh, we need to know more about what are the different types of data sets available uh, there are different types of uh, data sets which are available like uh, the matrix data, the document data, I mean like uh, the video data, temporal data, sequential data, it could be spatial data or uh, maybe the social network data, the graph and related networks data. So the, there could be different type of data which are available. So to have a glimpse about what are the different type of data, it could be image data sets which could be used for the image processing uh, purposes and we could also have the spatial data sets where it could be like the you know the spatial image detection and from the satellite imageries and uh, we can deal with uh, textual data and uh, we could deal with the web data which is a wide way, uh, you know world of research which is in there and uh, genetic data the associations and uh, the time series data related to the stock market predictions and bitcoin mining and all the stuff right so there are different types of data which we could deal with and uh, whenever we think about data we should be very clear about so understanding the data is very important when it comes to data mining and uh, we could even say that data wrangling or data pre-processing which we could which we have to do uh, in the data mining in fact consumes almost 80 percent of the time and only if we do a proper pre-processing we get a proper um, you know insights we will be able to get some proper insights from the data so that's very very important so uh, it's very important for us to uh, significant for us to understand the data and its attributes associated with it so let's see about what are the different type of attributes which we have so basically these attributes are mainly divided into qualitative and quantitative so when it comes to quantitative attributes it's like more of a categorical values like uh, binary like uh, zero or one or yes or no or ordinal values maybe I'm numbered it to say I'm, I'm taking the film reviews the film reviews from like 0 to between 1 and 0 to 5 so uh, I could say some nominal values so the, these all comes as a qualitative date uh, attributes and when it comes to quantitative it's like continuous values or discrete values like say stock market prediction the values changes it's just just keep pouring in like in continuous range of data so that is basically all those basically comes as the quantitative value so uh, those attributes which comes in a measurable quantity could be called as a quantitative data and qualitative data are those which which we could understand uh, you know uh, describes object without giving some actual size I mean like is female or male we don't know okay say okay male or female that's it yes or no so it's like you know we will not be able to completely measure with a with a particular numerical value associated with it uh, so these are the major divisions which you could see so you have qualitative and quantitative you have nominal ordinal and uh, binary and you have numeric discrete and continuous and this binary could also be again considered or divided into symmetric and asymmetric so uh, we will first see about the qualitative attributes 
So when it comes to qualitative attributes, the first thing is nominal or categorical attributes. Say colors. So if I, if I, if I say colors, I could say blue, black, black or brown and categorical data as lecture, professor, associate, professor and all this stuff. So those are all like categories which the data could fall into. And I could say about no, ordinal values. Ordinal values is basically kind of the most common examples which you could see is like the hardness of the minerals like good, better, best or the grades of the students like A, A plus, etc. The pay scale 16, 17 or 18, 16 pay scale. What, what's the pay scale that we are in? And uh, when it comes to qualitative, it's mainly binary. So, so again, you have divisions like binary or Boolean, like zero or one. A medical test, whether you are positive or negative, COVID positive or negative, cancer detector benign or, you know, whether you are cancer, you know, you, you have cancer. So, so what is your, you know, category, category that comes into? So symmetric binary means that, you know, the states, uh, the both outcome states, I mean, like, you know, say gender, like male or female or asymmetric uh, binary means that, they are not, I mean, like, you know, the outcome of the states are not equally important. I mean, like, uh, or not equally important in the sense, like, they have some difference in there, in, in that. Yeah, but it, but when it comes to terms of the symmetric binary, it's like equally weighted, like female or male. Yeah, it's equally weighted. Uh, say if you have cancer, okay, you have, uh, you know, you, you are sad about it. So its weightages are basically different. So they are not equally important. So that does gives you like different types of uh, the, the impact upon you is different based on the, the value which you get. That is asymmetric binary. And uh, when it comes in terms of the quantitative, uh, they are mainly the numerical values or some integer or some real values associated with it. So it could be like interval based. So there's a most common example. So maybe like pH values. So you are, you know, having a particular range for the pH value or it's ratio scaled. I mean, like, you know, whether, uh, you know, like four grams, okay, is twice as heavy as weight of two grams. So it's kind of ratio. It's two into something which gives you that. So it's, it's kind of ratio based and uh, it could be discrete attribute. Discrete attribute means, uh, you know, you have some finite or countably infinite set of values. That means that say continuous attribute means similar to numerical attribute. So these are some examples for this. Say if I say that, you know, your discrete attributes, I could say that the gas tank is full or empty. Uh, say if I'm telling like gas tank is full, still I don't know which, which gas volume you are actually referring to. Uh, the tree heights, tall, medium, short, but you know, there could be different trees with different tall, medium and short. So that differs from one tree to another tree. So I still don't know what is, I'm not clear about, you know, what, what is that particular value that you're actually talking about. And uh, performance, you know, out of the scale of whether you're 100 you're talking about or out of the scale of 50 you're talking about, I'm not very sure about it. But pieces per hour, I'm very clear about what you're talking about. So there are different type of uh, attributes uh, which comes in like discrete attributes and continuous attributes. And now uh, we need to, so we have talked about uh, what the data are, the different types of data are and the attributes can be of quantitative or qualitative, I mean like mainly categorical values or the other values, um, qualitative ones. And now we are going to talk, uh, talk about the distribution of the data. So for that we have uh, two main uh, categories of, uh, for finding the distribution of the data. So normally when you see, uh, if, if you take the data uh, or say the, the marks of a students in the class, uh, I, I mean like, you know, uh, normally in a class we will have some students who won't study that much, then we'll have some students who study really well and then we will have some average set of students. So when we take the data, we will have a normal distribution of data which, which falls into a bell curve. Um, but there will be some uh, areas or scenarios where, you know, say the students who are joining for data mining, yes, all the cream students are joining for data mining. So maybe I, there is a higher chance that I get some skewed data rather than, you know, I might not have some uh, students who, who does not do well because all the students really do well because they are cream set of the students who are joining for my class. Uh, so the distribution of the data in fact varies. So for finding the central distribution of the data, there are two different ways. One is basically the central tendency and other one is the dispersion of the data. So the central tendency basically um, shows to you or you know it's kind of a single value which helps you to identify where exactly is the central position of your data. I mean, like for that, if you want to understand more about it, the common terms which you would know from, which you would have learned from the previous, uh, from the younger, uh, younger set of your uh, studies is that the mean, median, mode and mid-range. So these are the values which comes in uh, for understanding the central tendency. So the other one is basically the dispersion of the data. That means like how far the data has 
uh, has moved from the central point you know the what is the variance of the data so you need to understand like x minus mu by sigma okay that is the variance of your data and uh, the skewness of your data uh, and all this st stuff which we have to understand will be understood by with the help of dispersion of the data so first let's understand the central tendency of the data or the central position for identifying the central position of the data so the first one is basically the mean which you all very it's very popular and which you all know about so uh, mean is uh, it's not uh, uh, it's basically the central value it gives you the central value and there are basically two different type of means one is arithmetic mean and weighted arithmetic mean it is basically called as x bar or it is also called as mu or sig uh, mu okay? and uh, when you have to calculate a uh, arithmetic mean the simple way of calculating that is uh, as simple as that say uh, you have values from say this is your first value second value third value four value six seven so you have like you know uh, uh, six values here so out of the six values what you have to do is that one by n so the total number of values is basically six and you need to range it so you are going to iterate through each and every value so the sigma means it is your summation so you are going to traverse from 1 to 6 okay you're going to traverse from 1 to 6 values and what are you going to do upon the values upon the values you're going to take a summation and you are to, going to take the summation of all the values divided by 6 so that is what you're going to do so basically what you will do is that you when i is equal to 1 you will take 66 plus then you will go to second value so it is 66 plus 57 plus 71 plus 54 plus 69 plus 58 whole divided by 6 so that is what is nothing but your normal arithmetic mean is all about right so when you calculate this you will get like 62.5 is almost kind of the middle mid value middle value for this particular the mean of the whole set of this range of values which is given to you and now uh, you can also do the uh, the weighted mean so weighted means uh, uh, mean in the sense like say uh, you have examinations like you know midterm exam final exam and project but each of them has got different kind of weightages associated with it so say uh, you are getting some uh, particular value so that particular value is converted into that particular weightage into so and so so say if you get 65 percent so 65 out of 100 into 0.65 okay into that weight is added divided by the whole set of weight so th that is what you do uh, for calculating the uh, weighted mean so uh, if you want to calculate the weighted mean of 1 2 3 4 what you will do is that you will calculate the the normal mean is this way so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and divided by 4 you will get 2.5 uh, but say if you want to calculate a weighted mean uh, what you do is that uh, say um, I'm giving a weight of 1 by 4 to each member so 1 into 1 by 4 2 into 1 by 4 so each member I'm associating that with a weight so that is what it is xi into wi and what you have to do you need to traverse through all the numbers with xi x is nothing but this 1 2 3 4 into wi your weight is 1 by 4 right so into all those divided by what you have to do you need to take a summation of your weights so summation of your weights in the sense you have uh, got basically uh, 1 by 4 so uh, the weight is actually 1 by 4 into 4 which will give you 1 okay so which will give you 1 so all this particular values divided by 1 so you will get it as 2.8 so oh, oh, what uh, I'm trying to say is that when you take a normal mean you will get your uh, middle value as 2.5 but if you according to the weight that you are assigned to the each and every value you will get like 2.8 is your mean value so more weight is uh, basically uh, will give you you know more um, value so that will actually shift the central value when when the weight is associated with it so that is nothing but the weighted mean so say if you have multiple factors to be considered into maybe for each and every factor you can actually add a weight and uh, there will be some attributes which need more weightages there will be another attributes which need only very less weightages but only thing which you have to keep in mind is that all your weights added together has to count up to one okay so that is the total weights has to still add up to one so that is one thing which you have to keep in mind and this is an activity which which you, which you could basically do and uh, yeah so now the next one is basically the median so median is again the middle score so it's exactly the middle score of the data uh, say if they have been arranged in the order of its magnitude and uh, say uh, for finding the median you have two different uh, so there is an algorithm which you have to follow if your n is odd the median is a middle value because say if you have five different values then of course you get the middle value there but if you have if your n is even then you have to uh, uh, take the average of the two middle values uh, middle two values in order to get the median so we'll see that 
say we have uh, n is equal to 9. So here basically you have 9 different values. So n is basically odd. So when you take the middle value, you can exactly take the middle value as 35 and because that is a fifth value. But say you are adding one more value to it and you have 10 different values. Then what you have to do is that you need to take the average of these two values in order average of these two values means 35 plus 39 by 2 will give you 37. So 37 is basically the median of this particular value. So when the value, the number of, uh, you know, observations which you have in the data is odd, you can directly take the middle value. And uh, uh, if you have an even value, then you have to take the average of two values, which is in the middle. Uh, then comes mode. Mode is the easiest one or it is also called as the ERG max. Okay, A-R-G-M-A-X, ERG max of the values which you will see if you are learning uh, machine learning, then they are called as the ERG max. So this ERG max or the mode is nothing but the say the most commonly used. Uh, so this is basically an, uh, you know, an example from India. So most common mode of transportation in India is bus, okay, the public transport. So, but when it comes to uh, Bahrain, if you could take, you know, you could say that, you know, car is the most common you know, transportation. So it's, it just gives you the most frequently occurring value, which is in the data set. And uh, there are different type of modes, which you could say. And uh, the first one is unimodal values, bimodal values, trimodal values, and multimodal values. There are different type of model values. So you can have multimodal values. So you can have two modes in the data set. So that is also possible, right? And then comes the mid range, which is very easy and it is very simple. So you have to take the Say you, if you are given with a set of values, you need to take the minimum of the, those values and you have to take the maximum of those value and divide by two, which will give you the, uh, the mid range of the data set. So uh, considering that, you know, just, just a little bit more about, you know, uh, you know, what we can do or how can we actually utilize that in the case of a data set? Say if, if, I'm, if you are given with a data set, you know, how can you utilize this mean, median, mode and mid range for identifying the data? So that's what it is. So the, the first one is basically the normal distribution. So when it comes to the normal distribution, the main thing which you have to understand is that the, the your graph will look like a normal, you know, bell shaped curve, like a, it will look like a bell, you know, uh, bell curve. And uh, you could see that your mean is equal to mode, mode is equal to median, everything, all the values will be of the same value. So if it is of the same value, then you could say that you got a perfect normal distribution of values. I mean like 50% of the values less than the mean and 50% of values greater than the mean. So it's like the perfect split, split of the data which you could get. Yeah, to understand more about this uh, perfect split, see in the, in the middle one is the one which we were actually talking about. The mean is equal to mode is equal to median. So that means that there is no skew. I mean like it's, it's a perfect split. Okay. But sometimes what happens is that normally when we get uh, data, uh, the data will be either negatively skewed or positively skewed. So uh, say if you could see that uh, this data, when you, when you see this particular curve, you could see that it has got a negative direction. Okay, it has got its tail which has gone to the negative direction. So it is called as a negatively skewed data where uh, we could say that uh, uh, it is a left skewed data. And in the left skewed data, the main thing which you have to understand is that your mean, okay, your mean will be less than your median. That means there is a bit of difference between your mean and median and moreover, the mean is basically lesser than the median. And when it comes to the positively skewed data, its tail basically follows a positive direction and uh, your mean will be uh, greater than the median value which you have got. Still, there will be a lot of uh, difference. And if the mean is equal to median is equal to mode, then it is the normal distribution data. So this uh, gives you a lot of information about how your data is basically distributed, uh, how the values are basically distributed across your uh, whole uh, data set. And uh, when to use what is a important question. So, uh, so the main thing which you have to keep in mind is that uh, say if you are actually working with, so according to the type of the attributes, we can actually select the more, uh, the, the central tendency for uh, identifying the data. So if we have a nominal data, we can go for the mode. If we are working with some ordinal value, you can actually go with median. And if you are actually working with some interview or ratio based data, you can actually go with mean in uh, ratio and this thing, even in the skewed it is. But uh, let me be honest with you. So this is just a central uh, normal one, but you know that differs from one data to another data account according to the application that you're getting. And according to the pre-processing uh, mode, which you have already done upon the data, it will vary as well. So this is just a, a tentative uh, idea which you could give, but definitely according to the data and according to the application that you are using, all this will change. 
Uh, now comes the, uh, I mean, the central tendency is basically done. And the second is basically the uh, dispersion of data. So now uh, we need to understand like how can we uh, measure the dispersion of the data. Uh, so dispersion of data commonly says that how the data is spread. So in order to know the spread uh, spread of the data, we have various measures like range five point summary, which is uh, very important and interquartile range and standard deviation and variance. So these are the major measures which we will use for uh, for understanding the spread of the data or dispersion of the data. So in order to understand what range is, so range is basically uh, the difference between the largest value and the smallest value in the in the in a whole set of data. So it's very simple if you are given with a uh, with the data. The first thing which you have to do is that you need to sort the data. So after sorting the data, you need to take the highest value minus the lowest value. You will get the range of the data. So it, it's basically in a range of uh, uh, you know eight. And now the second one is uh, the interquartile range, which is a very important factor. So interquartile range basically, in order for you to understand what is an interquartile range, first uh, you need to start from a place where uh, you should understand like what percentile is. So you would have uh, heard about, you know, say if you if you are writing for any any CAT exams or you know any MBA based exams, basically your scores will be uh, told in terms of the percentile. So that means that uh, out of 100 persons, you know, uh, you know how far you are, or you know, uh, you are at the which position, which position of uh, you know quartile. So say if you have a, a hundred data, that hundred data will be divided into four quartiles. I mean like you know four different sections like 75th section, 20, 50th section, 25th section, then the last section. So like that the whole data could be divided into four different sections and which section you will fall into. So that's what basically uh, it will talk about. So I mean like 80 percentage of people are shorter than you. That is what how we say if you if you could say that it is 80th percentile means you are actually ahead of 80 people, 80 percentage of the people. Or say if you are in the 95th percentile, it means that you are ahead of 90, 95, uh, you know, percentage of the pe people. So that's how it 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 basically means to uh, understanding about percentile. Now, as I told you, you uh, the whole set of data will be divided into four different quartiles. So the first quartile will be the lower quartile, that is 25 percent, and middle quartile will be the median, that is 50 percent, and Q3 will be your 75 percent. So this is how basically we will uh, divide our whole set of data into. And say so the um, uh, say if you want to understand about the data, so what you will do is that what how you have to actually calculate that is that say this if this is your set of the data, say you are taking the 25th course in the quartile. So how how will you identify the 25th quartile? Uh, that is nothing but you have 10 different values. So 10 into 0.25. So 2.5. So your your data will be somewhere around 2.5. Say 2.5 means it will be in the third position. So the value at the third position will be considered as the lower quartile. And say if you want to understand the middle position, yes, you will take the 50th position, so 5.5, so you will take the fifth position. And say it is 10 into 7.5 as it is 10 different values. So n is equal to 10. So this 10 is basically the number of the values, okay? So uh, 10 into 0.75, so 7.5, so almost eighth value. You will take the eighth value, so 7. So, so here you will have your value. This is your position and these are your data. So this will be your uh, upper quartile. So in the upper quartile, you will have seven. In the 50th quartile, you will have, uh, you know, 5.5 so or six or whatever it is. So six, you could take six, and then you have your, uh, you know, the the lower range. You will have 30. Sorry, three, three. And interquartile range is very important. So interquartile. So for understanding the interquartile range, we need all these informations which we have seen. So interquartile range is actually Q3 minus Q1. So when we consider this uh, previous cases, it is 7 minus 3. So you will get 4. So 4 is basically the interquartile range of this. So interquartile range is nothing but the simple measure, uh, which will gives you the spread. Uh, you know, it, it it the range which is covered by the mid half. So say the mid half is basically you know say 6 is the mid half or 5.5 is the mid half, but you know, I want to know about the range, you know, where I could consider as the mid half. So if I want to know about it, then I could say that from 4 till 5.5, you can consider for your interquartile range. That is basically your interquartile range. Uh, now, one beautiful concept which you have to uh, say for any data set if we, if we do. So we will do it in the next class itself. Say we could uh, understand something called five point summary. So five point summary is actually some uh, all the all the important terminologies that we have just studied. So say if we have a data about the data, we will find out the minimum value, the maximum value and the Q1, Q2, Q3. So all this information together, this five different values are basically called as a five point summary. So if we have all this information, 
uh, about the data then it is very easy for us to understand about how the data is all about. So say this is uh, so the the normal way of representing the data uh, for the five point summary is about with the box plot. So here if say if this is the box plot you could see that this is the minimum value, this is the maximum value, this is the median value and uh, you could also understand like uh, you know uh, uh, what is there any outlier. So this is an outlier so you will be able to identify the outliers from this particular uh, way. So box plot is one common way for identifying and understanding more about uh, the five point summary. And uh, so this is one example which is there for you. So you are given with the data. So the first thing which you have to do is that if the data is not sorted, you have to first sort it, then identify, then you have to identify all the different values and then you know plot it. Uh, so when you when you plot it, you will be able to uh, identify more. Now the uh, one major thing which you have to identify is that about the interquartile range and how is it actually related to the outlier detection. So uh, say if we have this uh, outlier. Uh, how, how to understand that whether we have outliers in the data okay and uh, so so in order to identify the outlier in the data uh, the one major there is a small formula which we could you do with the help of the IQR that is in the quartile range. So uh, the first formula is that IQR into 1.5 plus Q3 will give you uh, or if you get some particular values like that you can consider them as outlier. Any values which are less than this particular formula will be considered as outlier. So you have 55.5, you have 3.5. So these are the outliers of this whole data. So you have outliers like 55.5. Uh, so the values greater than 55.5, those values will be considered as uh, 73. And there are no values which are less than 3.5. So we have only one outlier for this data, which is 73. Okay, so this is how. So when you plot this particular data, you will have the minimum value, which is 12, and the maximum value, which is uh, 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 maximum value is actually uh, uh, you know uh, maximum value is 50 and you have this Q1 at 23 and then median which is at uh, 30.5 and the Q3 at 36 and you have this outlier 73 okay. So this is how you will plot the data okay. And now uh, this is about the interpretation of the box plot. So by giving an interpretation of the box plot you will be able to identify uh, the outliers. So, uh, so outliers in the data, the skewness of the data, the spread of the data, the center of the data, all these things will help you to identify more. Okay. So say uh, you have a, a, in a box plot which is actually kept like that. So if, if you get a box plot like this, uh, see this is kind of the distribution which you will basically get. So this you could say that okay this is a normal distribution. Say if you are getting a data like this then you could understand that its tail is basically positive and it is a skewed data, it is a positively skewed data. Okay, And uh, so this is how you will interpret from the uh, data. And now the next one is basically called as the variance. Okay, So variance uh, uh, basically gives you the square difference from the mean. So x minus mu by sigma. So x minus mu by n. Okay, That is basically your sigma. So, uh, so variance is nothing but if you have a large variance that means that the numbers in the data sets are far from the mean. So if you if you have a mean data mean and how far is the value from the mean okay and a smaller variance uh, indicates that the opposite that means that uh, large variance means that the numbers in the set are far from the mean and small variance says that the, uh, the numbers from the mean is lesser and uh, the variance value of 0 indicates that you know the set of the numbers are both identical that means you get a good uh, distribution of data. So that is how you will in infer. So this inference is very important. It is it is very important to understand. So uh, to ju just to understand it in a more closer way. So you could say that say here we have three different variances given. So this is variance 9 and this is variance 36 and this is variance uh, 100. Okay. And the normal distribution with uh, different variances and your mean is basically for this particular data is 100. So now you need to understand when the variance okay so here the variance uh, decreases the observations are closer to the mean okay so when the variance decreases so variance decreases means say the here we have we can take the variance 9 so variance 9 is the smallest one here so when the variance decreases is, decreases it's actually the all the observations are more closer to the mean okay now uh, when the variance increases say when it is 36 okay it is little more you know spread and when the variance is 100 it's actually you know very much spread okay so it's um, you know it's spread basically increases. 
Now uh, standard deviation, so standard deviation is actually uh, it, it gives you like how spread how spread out your numbers are. The, sig, the sig, uh, symbol which we use is uh, sigma or s you could use and it is basically the square root of variance. So the variance formula is this x minus x bar the whole square and uh, divided by n minus n or it could be both n minus 1 or n. It is based on the samples, okay, whether you are taking a sample or a population. So that is nothing but this difference of n minus 1 or n. And this n minus 1 is most commonly used because you know you don't want to uh, end up in any uh, divided by 0 kind of similar situations. Okay. So low standard deviations means that you know you are more closer to the mean. So it's exactly like in the variance. And uh, if you have a high standard deviation, it means that your data is you know spread and farther from the mean. So when you look at this, uh, you know, this you could say that you know this is your mean. Okay, so this is your uh, mu, mu is your mean and this is your sigma. Okay, so when it is closer means it's uh, it has got you know all the values you know more closer to the mean and when it has got a high uh, uh, standard deviation it means that it has got a larger uh, you know spread of data. And uh, now this is a small example which you have to do it for uh, yourself in fact you know so uh, you know you need to identify you know what is a uh, yeah, I mean like the mean variance and the standard deviation of those docs. So you are given with a set of docs and uh, so these data are given to you and you need to identify the mean. Then what you have to do is that you have to identify the variance by using this particular formula and then you have to identify the standard deviation. Okay. So from all this uh, what will you infer is the question. So now we can we basically got this particular all the data. So using the standard deviation we have standard way of doing it. So uh, Rottweilers are ta basically tall dogs and dash hunts are basically a bit short, right? So uh, that is what we you basically get. So you have basically identified about what are the various data in the attributes and the different type of attributes, what are the central dis uh, you know statistical description of the data and the central tendency and the dispersion of the data, which is very important for understanding and inferring how the data is basically distributed. Uh, so that's all for the day. Thank you so much. So I think you know you will you understood the lot of the uh, the basic statistical concepts that are basically required for the data mining class. So uh, thank you so much. So keep doing some examples and make your um, uh, make your understanding more clear to you. Thank you so much.